The FT4 protocol for digital contesting. What is it? How does it compare to FT8? Well, in this video, we're gonna have a look at the newest mode that WSJT has just announced. Uh, it's exciting, it's fun, it's quick. Uh, so let's dive into it. So FT4 is a special purpose mode designed for digital contesting. So it serves this purpose very well, but much like FT8, it is not supposed to be used for extensive conversations. The differences between FT4 and FT8 are not a lot. The main difference between FT4 and FT8 is the fact that FT4 uses six second sequences between transmit and receive. This is two and a half times quicker than FT8. So you can have a lot more QSOs in a contest. So now FT4 can work with signals that are 10 dB weaker than RIDI. So you can make a lot more QSOs and you can hear a lot more. Plus you can use compromised antennas and compromised uh, power levels. So it can even work in a QRP situation. If you've got a QRP rig and you've got a compromised antenna, you can still take part effectively in the contest by using FT4. Now the sensitivity threshold for about 50% decode rate of FT4 is around about 16 dB, 15, 16 dB. So that means that it is five dB difference to FT8. FT8 works at around about minus 20. So you lose a little bit of sensitivity. However, what you lose in sensitivity, you gain in the extra uh, speed of FT4. So in a HF contesting environment, uh, you're gonna have strong signals, so you're probably not gonna find that you're gonna miss that uh, uh, 5 dB over FT8. So aside from it being quicker than FT8, essentially operates the same as FT8. Uh, all the controls are the same, the message structures are the same. The main difference though is this, there is a new S plus P button. Now this S plus P stands for search and pounce. Now what that button does is that it examines all the CQ messages decoded during a receive cycle and it looks through and it determines which one is the best potential QSO partner. So what it does is it means that if you have a lot of stations coming through calling CQ, it will find the best CQ station to respond to. Now FT4 uses GFSK modulations, much less bandwidth as compared to RIDI. So obviously the same as in other WSJTX modes, uh, there's either an all decode or no decode, it's all or nothing. So that hasn't changed either. So the release candidate for FT4 that will be released is a test release candidate. It's not meant for proper contesting. That's why when they release it, it will expire on June the 7th, 2019. The reason for this is that there are two contests, the ARRL VHF contest on June 8 to 10, and the ARRL field day, which is June 22nd and 23rd. They don't want this to be used for those contests. So there'll be two and possibly three practice sessions for using this new FT4 mode. What this will enable is the, the developers to be able to find out whether there's any serious bugs or anything that needs to be uh, fixed in the program before it's released. So there'll be two practice sessions. There'll be one on May 9 and one on May 14. Both of these will uh, operate at 0 to 0 100 UTC. They'll be on 40 meters on 7.090 megahertz. And this will be the time to practice and, and uh, to test this FT4 mode. So if you can download this uh, release candidate, try it on air and just see how it goes and just try to make as many contacts as possible. Try and find the bugs and uh, just report that to the developers. So the main advantage that I can see with FT4 is that you can use low power and compromise antennas to still effectively be part of a contest. I'd like to say thank you for the recent subscribers that I had and the views uh, on my recent videos. It's been fantastic. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button uh, hit the bell icon too on my channel. Uh, that'll notify you of any new uploads. And please also leave a like or a comment on my video uh, if you find the content enjoyable.